What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Value Town number 13, and Happy New Year to everybody. 2014 is, on, well, in progress now. It's going to be our first show of 2014, too, so we're really excited. What's up, Crypt Trump? How you guys doing? Hey. Yo. Yo, all right. How's your holidays? How's your New Year's and everything? I spent a Good. lot of time streaming. That's true. So, so did I. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> I had we know how to party. Was, no. So it was like every day, basically. What? No. It was a stream party on each of our individual streams, I believe. All right. All right. Very well. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, I know right now maintenance is going on. A lot of you folks can't play Hearthstone right now, so... You know, it's a good time for us to have value time. Uh, so this is going to be our new time, guys. We're going to be doing that 3 p.m. Eastern each and every Thursday. Uh, so hopefully it works out for you guys. should be better for the Europeans, I think, uh, a little bit earlier for you guys because I know a lot of folks have to sleep early and that, that sort of bit. So we're going to try start trying this out. And why don't we start off by talking a little bit about, um, I don't know, met, the metagame, ladder reset. What are your thoughts on the ladder reset? You think... Uh, I know you guys didn't play too much Contractor or try too hard to get to Legendary this time around, but is that going to change at all with this most current reset? Trump, you think you're going to be pushing more for Legend? Yeah, I have actually set aside the entire today and probably tomorrow to climb up to Legend, well, as high as I can. And I've got awesome. nine separate decks with nine classes. I'm going to play them all. Really? Wow, okay. Which, which one are you going to start with? Uh, Random. RNG. RNG. Okay. All right, I'm just going to play every single one and just rotate through. All right. Sounds good. Crip, you going to make a, a, an honest, serious push for uh, Legend? Or are you just going to kind of do what you did this time? more time into it. But um, mm -hmm. with the ranks being like inflation thingy, yeah. like with the win streak over time bumping up the, the medium, it's actually going to be really hard to get legendary, like, even in two days, I think. I think it took longer than, I think it took longer than three days the last time. And there was one player that was legendary after three days, and the second place was, like, rank four or something, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at, at the beginning, it's definitely a lot more work. There's definitely mm. some bragging rights. But uh, I have no decks. And in fact, I'm worse <laughs> off than having no decks because I'm... I'm prohib prohibited from playing Paladin as my Paladin's like level 59.8 or something. So I gotta try to level them up equally. Yeah. So I have no decks and I can't play Paladin. So my odds are not quite as good as Trump's are. So are you, are you guys gonna take a, a more efficient approach to it? Like trying to play faster decks so you can get more games in in a less amount of time? Or do you think. I mean, I know you have nine decks, Trump, but I, I mean, are you gonna be. You know, the, the control decks take a long time to play. So if you were to play like your a pally control deck, those games are going to take two, three times longer than like an aggro warlock, or like a murloc warlock, right? Do you guys take that approach at all, or just going to go with whatever? Well, my middle name is T. Erdle Trump, so <laughs> I don't mind these slow control decks at all, and I will, I just want to have the highest win percentage, that's all. Yeah. Nothing more efficient than just winning all I've, the I have games. some advice for Trump. Because I, I want I want to see the value town do well, you know. But if if you're really going hardcore, like doing it in a lot of hours, the people who are going to be like at the top are all going to play aggro decks. So mm -hmm. the way to beat them <laughs> is to go th to the top with an aggro deck as they do, and then switch it to anti aggro before they do. That's, that's, meta. that's the idea. Ladder meta right here. On I don't think you're wrong there. Actually, I yeah. have. Uh, skewed all of my decks toward anti-aggro. Yeah. Well, it's just the notion that there's not going to be control decks getting up there as fast as the aggro decks. It's, it's just impossible, as, as, uh, as Chan Man said. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not impossible. It's just not as efficient time-wise. Uh, like, somebody can literally play... No, like, like, like after, let's say, like four hours, the top deck will not be a control deck. Because it, it, it can't have that many wins. So I'm oh, talking about like right when it yeah. gets released. Okay, I see. You really want to be the best. The best. The best. The best. Yep. Top yep. tips by Crip. Top tips by Crip. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, okay, so I'm looking forward to that. Unfortunately, I I'm only going to have like today, and then I'm going to be out of town for like five days, which is really bad for laddering. <laughs> but I'll have to 
I'll have to be that way. Uh, it's going to be cool to see. What do you guys think of the, the current legendary ranking system? Because I, I know I've talked to a lot of people, and you know, one of the big complaints is that the, the rankings just fluctuate so hard each and every day. Uh, even some people winning a game will drop in the legendary rankings. Do you think there needs to be a change there? Trump, what do you think? Uh, seems great to me. I think it's entirely, well, from... Basically, I've only talked to Strive Crow about it, and from mm -hmm. what I've heard, and he's number one. He says it's all <laughs> about ELO, and makes sense to me. The reason why you win yeah. and you drop a rank is because other people happen to win at the same time as you. That's yeah. all right. That's true. All right. Well, yeah. looking forward to Not seeing. Sure. Yeah, looking I've, forward to seeing. I have like fun doing ladder every now and then, but I mostly just like having fun with some decks, and they do okay. I think I got to like rank six or something, just doing whatever's. What do you think about your viewers? Do you, do you think your viewers... Has it, is there any change in what your viewers want to see? Are they still very hardcore arena-centric, arena, uh, arena -centric or do a lot of them... I mean, w would you get the same, I guess, viewer count if, if you were doing Constructed all day versus Arena? I don't care. <laughs> I know, I'm just... Just for uh, just for other fo just for other folks who are not like you know dominating the stream the streams right now like what what do you think viewers like to see right now? I think viewers like to see a really good player, and mm. I think for Trump and I it doesn't matter because they know who we are. But for like newer streamers, it's much easier to say you know I am legend rank this as opposed to hey I'm good at arena. It's very yeah. you know it's quantified, and that that lets them get in some attention. So that would, yeah, that would that's be a good my point. tip. Good yeah, point. I mean, to hop on that to some extent, just being, say, like, legend top 20, or I'd say, like, if you really wanted to get in stream, and I probably should have said this last week because now it's too late to set up, but you should just race to the top, and then you can advertise your legend one, and then you'll get a lot of viewers. Mm -hmm. um, I yep. think that, as for me, obviously I've only pretty much done arena, but... It'll be good for a change of pace to do Constructed. And part of the reason why I think Arena gets a little more attention than Constructed is because of the diversity. That's why I've actually created nine decks also. And I also think they're all strong. Okay. Very well, very well. Well, let's move on to evaluating cards like we always do. We're on our last class, the Warrior class here, guys. And, um, you know, maybe we'll go through them again, just given that metagame changes so much eventually, but our first pass at least is almost done here, so let's switch over to our deck viewer here. And same deal as always, guys. We'll let Trump take the left card first, and then we'll take, Crip take we'll let Crypt take the right card first. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about, I guess, Warrior meta too, I guess at, at the end of this Constructed, because lots, lots going on with the Warrior right now, particularly in the OTK, OTK style. So. so let's start off with Charge, Trump. Wanna lead us off? Alright, in Arena, this card... Well, actually, in Arena, I recently had this card to do surprisingly well, but overall, it is uh, quite bad. It's... Mm -hmm. uh, the cases with the zero mana cards in Constructed, they have their places where they can be abused, but in Arena, it's pretty difficult to justify spending one card to give a minion charge. That's all. Okay, Crip? Yes, this card is pretty YOLO. Um, there are decks in a warrior where you can you have enough weapons, you have enough chargers, where you just run them all into your opponent every time. And you would need an extremely good deck. And then a pretty shitty pick to get this card in there, I think. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, let's move on to Inner Rage. I think Inner Rage is pretty good. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't pick it over a lot of stuff, but it's it's okay. You know, it's it's damage to the face as a finish. It's um, possibly an okay trade if you're running the cheapos like um, you know Acolyte of Pain, Novice Engineer, mm -hmm. and you know you can kill something if it has one toughness. You have spell damage. You kill something that has two toughness. So it's pretty flexible, but I don't know if you have like a really fast deck. It's pretty dangerous to. Uh, have like cards like these because you're just gonna dump your hand and as a warrior armoring up isn't so good. Have either of you used these two cards with uh, Wild Power Mentor at all for removal or anything like that? Not in Arena. That's pretty difficult to pull off in Arena. Yeah, that's probably true. 
Okay, next uh, two cards are... Okay, execute. Trump, you want to I used to think this card was terrible. I've uh, come about face, and it usually ends up dealing like four damage is the way I think of it now. If you have like a chump minion or just random damage, uh, I think the card is now slightly above average. That's it. Okay. It's a really good solution I, to the big stuff. It's the only answer you have as a warrior. I swear we did warrior or something. I remember talking to Trump about this card, and I remember telling him, I think one is good, because it's kind of hard to deal with like one or two of the cards in the opponent's deck, and then more than one is usually really bad, because if you stack them up in your hand, it's complete trash. Hmm. And I feel the same way. Okay. As that opinion. All right, shield slam. This kind of card's kind of interesting since it feels like you're supposed to you're you're not supposed to use it to kill anything. You're supposed to use it just to damage things. Shield slam is pretty good. I've actually had a deck with two of them in the arena, and it was quite good. Okay. You do like uh, you know, seven to to twenty damage shield slams every now and then. <laughs> um, yeah, it works kind of. I mean, there's usually better epic cards, but not always. There's some terrible ones, so sometimes this is what you got to take, and it's not that bad. All right, let's move on. Yeah, a solid card. Okay, uh, next up is Upgrade. Gives 1-1 one, one to your weapon, or if you don't actually have a weapon, it gives 1-3, which I don't see too often. It's almost as good as Light's Justice. <laughs> exactly, right. Yeah. The card is okay, and I think it's okay to use as Light's Justice also. Um, it's... Think of it as... It's okay. I mean, it's difficult to say, because think of it as uh, if you have a Fire War Axe, you do one, and you uh, basically heroic strike. Sort of. It's fine. I don't like this card. I think this card is good if you have like a very set amount of weapons. Mm -hmm. But it's bad if you have too few, and it's bad if you have too many. And usually this card is like, you know, pick five or six or something, and then you're like, okay, well, what do I do? So I, I don't know, I, I end up skipping this card a lot as a result. Okay. Uh, Whirlwind. Uh, this, this card, I know personally I have kind of mixed feelings about since it damages my own minions too, which can be problematic with comboing with anything. What do you, got, what do you think, Crip? My feelings are pretty clear. This card is crap. <laughs> Fuck Whirlwind. Okay. Yeah, Trump? the card's garbage. Card is garbage. All right. Yep. Easy, easy. Armor Smith. This card I also think is garbage, but I will give the asterisk that whenever I've played it, it's been surprisingly good. Um, so I'm going to say that this is below average. It's bad because one attack on a two mana thing is like so unthreatening and this doesn't help your board position really, though technically it does trade with a 3-2, which is also what you get for two. Mm -hmm. Uh, still, I think it doesn't do enough. Talking about the good scenarios, like the times that has worked out the for you. The good scenario is you, uh, have board control and then you play armor smith and then you gain a lot of armor off of her no that's, that's not it, it. <laughs> I've, I've been <laughs> on the receiving general. end of, of okay. armor smiths and this is it so I was playing like aggro lock and I didn't have imps but I had a crap load of one drops and the guy plays two armor smiths and that's oh wow okay you know, that's pretty much when you want to give up on life <laughs> when he gets up to 20 armor it's, or 15 armor or something like that no, it's just like each armor smith killed like 3 cards and gained them crap load of life yeah what are you doing playing 1 mana 2 ones it's warlock it's fresh hey, man. priestess baby <laughs> priestess <laughs> it's the new rage So, alright battle rage you guys run this card at all anymore yeah it's a good card Okay. you can usually drop 2 uh the difference is you you don't want to like stack them like you wouldn't pick like three of these you'd pick one and maybe pick two if you had to I think All right Trump I don't think the card is good but I don't think it's terrible I would rank it somewhere between bad and average 
uh, it very often ends up drawing only one card, but it also often draws you two cards. And sometimes it's amazing, but not really uh, worth the risk, I'd say. All right. Uh, moving on, Cleave. Uh, card is really good. The dream is to cleave the opponent's two three twos. <laughs> and, well, I mean, it's also just good. It will often two for one or 1 1.5 for one takes out something and then helps you take out something else. I like it a lot. Grip. I think this card is a worse forked lightning. And... Really? I'm okay. still on the edge about forked lightning. It keeps punishing me, but every time I seem to have it in my hand, it does nothing, so I don't know. I mean, forked lightning is... Indecisive is, about this card. Forked lightning actually ends up costing more mana in the end, right? It's it's like three Yeah, I mean, mana. you can scale it to three, and because of Stormforged Axe, you have a lot more flexibility. Okay. Uh, commanding Shell? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really had that many chances to take this card. I'd usually just pick a real card that's like Commanding Shout, Zero Drake, whatever, and go Zero Drake. So, you know, I, I don't know. I played it maybe a few times. Nothing too crazy come of it. It it has some potential to be crazy, but I don't know. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen it even against me yet. It's not really fair to compare Commanding Shout to one of the best rare as a Zero Drake. Uh, I think the card is good, not uh, extremely good like Azure Drake, but it often is a 1.5 for one because you'll end up saving a minion at one health when normally it would have died, and sometimes you save two minions and you kill two of their minions, and it's really good. I think the card is good. Not great, not bad, above average. Okay. Uh, next up, Cruel Taskmaster. Pretty similar to Interage, but... It's an actual minion. What do you think, Trump? Yeah, uh, this card is sort of supporty. You certainly don't want to play it on two. So the problem with Warrior in general is you want to pick up a lot of two minions because your warrior, your hero ability sucks, and you need to play. You therefore need to play something on two, otherwise you're going to fall too far behind. Uh, Cruel Taskmaster is unfortunately something you don't really want to play on two, but sometimes you do if you have nothing else and they don't play anything. I think I would be willing to play Cruel Taskmaster with nothing on the board. Uh, that was long-winded and basically it usually ends up being two mana, two to deal one damage or two mana, two to like trade up. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. Good grip. Thoughts? I think this card is pretty good. Um... I've never really got a chance to pick like tons of them, but I think I've, you know, at two, it's still really good. It seems like the card where you know you need something going for you before you can really make it useful, and you know that can be difficult sometimes. So, yeah, I think it's good though. I like it. Okay, fiery war axe, which I think I'll, I think last, <laughs> I think we have, you know, I think we have talked about fiery war axe, haven't we? It's uh, I mean, I know a lot of people regard this this weapon as the best weapon in the game, or one of the best weapons in the game. Thoughts on it? Trip. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it's this might be the best two mana cost card. I think it's really close to Stormforged Axe. Sometimes Stormforged Axe is a lot better, but often Fiery Wire Axe is a lot better. But um, yeah, I mean, a two drop weapon. It gives you that insane lead at the start, which lets you do whatever you want from that point very often, and you just win the game because of it. Super OP. I think it's the number one warrior card. Okay, Trump? I agree. Number one warrior card, and possibly best card in the game. Uh, well, best common in the game. Mm -hmm. Come, uh, I think I said Fire Elemental was the best one. It, it's close between those two. Maybe this is number two to Fire Elemental. Maybe this is number one. It's really close. Wow, okay. Uh, next up, Hero Strike. Uh, this card... Or Heroic Strike, sorry. <laughs> it turns out... Yeah. It turns out that this card is... I usually like it less if I have more weapons because then you do severe overkill uh, and you unfortunately can't like both attack with your weapon and then also Heroic Strike. 
Uh, two mana, deal four damage, but also take the minion damage is reasonable. I think it's okay. It's not great. Okay. Grip, thoughts? I usually uh, also, uh, I would usually replace it in my opening hand if I got it, because it's overkill in the early game. Mm -hmm. I've uh, warmed up to this card. Um, I feel in my opening hand, if I don't have another two drop, I would keep Heroic Strike, just to kill off their two drop and just play my three drop if I get one. Uh, I don't know. I like it. I think you can use it to push for damage. You can use it at the beginning. I mean, it's no Fiery War Axe, but I think it's good. I like it. It's pretty cheap, I mean, for the damage it does, too. Have you ever had a bunch of them and just, like, <laughs> unleashed a giant giant one-turn hit to the face? Ever had that happen in Arena? Not a bunch of these, but, like, these plus Gore Hell, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sounds like a worse use of Mind Blast. It's four <laughs> damage instead of five. But yeah, no, I get it. It's true. good because it's flexible. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you can do it for the damage to the head. You can do it to the damage to the minions. It's fine. Yeah. It's good. All right, Rampage. Only works on damage minions, which is interesting. Grip, what do you think? Um, This is like Whirlwind level. <laughs> I'm, it has I'm to be used sure with Whirlwind. <laughs> it, it it would be Whirlwind and Rampage side by side. I'm not sure. I might go with the third card. Um, but I have been punished by, like, you play, like, Rogue or something, and they Novice Engineer, and then you attack into it, and they Rampage the Novice Engineer and lose the game badly. <laughs> but generally, it's a dead card. Trump. I agree with that, like... You can always come up with situations where these really situational cards are good, but more often than not, this card is really bad, and it is terrible for the most part. All right, moving on, we got Slam. Slam is really good and solid. Uh, it's usually going to give you a 1.5 for 1 card advantage because you'll usually use it on something big and then draw a card and then you finish off, uh, finish off that minion with one of your weaker guys. Or, I mean, in a pinch you can keep it in your hand and then deal with your opponent's 3-2, which is a fine use for a 2 mana card anyways. Uh, good card. Yeah, combos well with Execute too, a lot of times. Crip, what do you think? Yep, Spine is good. Seems like the card where you don't want that many of, but never happened to me. Usually you try to stack the weapons. So. Okay. Uh, next up, Frowling Berserker. This card is pretty hilarious sometimes. I think I had um, like a 14 damage Frowling Berserker to the face yesterday or something. Yeah, wow. It's like pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> but usually uh, it's, it's like a prime target for anything. Like, you play Frothing, the chance that it survives the next turn is is very low. So, usually trade Frothing for one one of the premium removal spells, and that turns out to be pretty good in general. Yeah. Obviously, the card is nuts. It just, I don't know, it hardly ever survives. So, it's it's a rarity that it does anything, but yeah. yes. Trump if it does something, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think we're arguing uh, more on, like, we both agree it's really good. It's more of arguing on how good it is, I would go as far as to say this is the best rare. Uh, if you're a warrior, oh, okay. there is no better rare. So I'm saying this is number one. Okay, yeah, that's saying a lot. I know I try to get rid of it as soon as it comes down the board. It's crazy good. All right, shield block. Gain five armor. Trump, what do you think? Card's reasonable. As it turns out, when I'm a warrior, I usually end up with very few spells. And I'm counting weapons as spells, because basically non-minions. Uh, nice to have some flexibility in what you can cast each turn, because if you just get all minions, then it'd be like, oh, uh, I don't really have many choices, but then this is like another choice for you. Uh, the best card is the top deck, because you draw a card, and you spend some mana, and you have a fairly good effect. Uh, it turns out that the card is about average, but since it's a spell and since warriors tend to not have that many spells, it bumps up to surprising to like slightly above average. That's my read on it. Oh, and I would mention that it's a terrible turn three play. 
and I would usually use the hero ability before using shield block unless I really needed the card. Okay. Crit? Yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's pretty good, but I think in Trump's situation, if this is your only 3-drop, I'd probably use it. Because you probably need the card if it's your only 3-drop. Probably. So that's know. probably a good point, too. Okay, uh, yes. let's go move on to Worse on Commander. You see this with a lot of the combo decks. What do, you, what do you think of this? Yeah, in Arena, even like the really crap Warrior decks, like I had a really bad Warrior deck, and I did really well just because I kept, kept combo and Urgent Commander and the opponent couldn't kill it. So if you get lucky, this thing stays on the board a few turns. You know, it's just it just gets out of control. You really, You really dominate the game if this card doesn't die. Trump? Yeah, I agree. This card is... It sort of fits into like the questing adventure and flesh-eating ghoul type card. It's a support card on three, and if it doesn't die, your opponent's going to have a really bad time. I think this card is more severe than flesh-eating ghoul, but maybe less severe than questing adventure, although it's close. And I would play it on turn three if the opponent had nothing. Yep. How many of these would you, would you pick? In your in an arena draft, I'd pick two, and then I would hesitate on the third one. Okay. Because it is a support card. I had uh, three last night, but I had no creatures with charge, none, so I didn't mind. Okay. Uh, next up, a Rathy Weaponsmith. Pretty good value in this one. You get a weapon and you get a three-three on the board. Yeah, this card is really good, and it's actually also really good with four song commander since on four you get to punch something for five damage, which is a lot. Uh, you charge out the three three, you swing with the two two or weapon, and I mean even if you have just nothing at all, this card is one of the top cards. You are basically getting a three for one the moment you play it because you get a two two weapon, which <laughs> means you deal two damage twice, and you have a three three. It's really really amazing. Grip? Yep. All Basically, right. <laughs> this card kills a Yeti and you still get something in the end. And that's true. That's basically that's the that's definition good. of a good card. Okay. Yeah, Is it on. better than Yeti, Crip? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, if you didn't have like many weapons at all, uh, you'd pick this over Yeti, I believe. Yeah, okay. Uh, next up, Corcoran Elite. Four Ice Cream. But um, it's a good card. Okay. It's a really good card. If you have a lot of these and a lot of weapons, you just smash your opponent's face. So it's fun when you draft that kind of warrior deck. It's really fun. Yeah, where you just never remove minions. You just hit to the face every single time. Yep. Yeah. Trump, thoughts? That's about it. It's a good card. Hmm. I actually think this card is... It looks really good, but then it turns out that a 2-mana 3-2... We'll kill it. And then I'm like, oh, that's sort of not too exciting anymore. It's really rare to... It's not that rare, but it's rare to be able to get a two-for-one with this card. And, I mean, that's not really the purpose. It's more of a tempo card and doing damage really fast. But I've just found it more often than not ends up being like four mana deal for damage, which is not exceptional. So I think the card is good. I just don't think it's really good. To counter uh, what Trump's saying... I actually find the 4-3 to be very good because usually what happens if you have a really good warrior deck is you fire your war axe and then on 3 they play one of those like annoying crap cards that um, you know either you don't want to fire your war axe or you can't like a demolisher or you know like a spell power unit like an acolyte of pain and I feel the Kirkrum just fits really well into that opener so I think it's Really good in the start sometimes, especially if you have a good opener. Okay, moving on. Mortal Strike. What do you think, Trump? Well, this card is definitely worse than Corcron Elite. I actually think this card compares so badly with Fireball that it makes me <laughs> cry sometimes because yeah. it's like, oh, you have to position yourself down to 12 or less health for it to be Fireball. And that just feels like a little bit of a slap in the face. Um,. The card is like slightly below average just because it's four mana deal for damage, which I think is weak. But it's okay. 
good. I think this card is amazing. <laughs> All right, um, pretty different opinion there. Yeah, I think this card is one of the best rares for a warrior. Wow. Um, okay. And it's because uh, arena is all about like planning on what's going to happen and mortal strike is thought to be bad so they never prepare for it and like i went 12 with a crap warrior deck and i had two mortal strikes and i just like slam jammed their face with them it, it, like they just don't see it coming it's it's the six damage from the left it's it's it's, <laughs> out, it's out there it wins so many games i think mortal strike is really really top tier wow trump Rebuttal to that? I'm not trying to. It's tough to rebut like... just because. Okay. I mean, are you talking about you're dealing six damage with it or four damage to it usually? With it doesn't it. even matter. They just never expect it. They put up like taunts and they're at, like, you know. I've seen Warlocks like put up a taunt and get himself to four life with a tap. I mean, if we're going to go down that logic, then Mind <laughs> Blast is way better than Mortal Strike. Costs two Please. less. But the priest can't really play the same way as a warrior. You didn't react like this when we talked about heroic strike, and it's not that different. Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, heroic it's... strike seems to be a lot better than mortal strike since it's two mana less. Certainly, it doesn't go through taunt, but it's also four damage, and it costs two less. I mean, if we're comparing heroic strike, which I thought was uh, somewhat average then you can see why I would think Mortal Strike is really bad, because it costs two more. Mm -hmm. The only Vev is goes Strike through time. pretty good. Heroic Strike also has a surprise factor. <laughs> the heroic Mortal Strike combo. Okay, uh, let's move on. Arcanite Reaper. Good. Card's good. This is more face-slamming action. Just to the face. I think the deck that was like pretty bad had like no fiery war axe, and two arcanite reapers, a couple chargers, mortal strikes, and just to the face, and it okay. worked. <laughs> Trump, to the face. I call this the Yeti killer. To uh, the face. And it's probably <laughs> <laughs> to the Yeti. Well, this card is uh, definitely worse than fiery war axe, despite it might, despite it looking to the untrained eyes like really good. It turns out to not be that good, in my opinion. Uh, it's above average, but it's not like super good, I would say. Just because it turns out when you're usually killing minions, uh, five damage is overkill. And that's why Fiery War Axe is a lot better. Uh, could be used to the face. That's reasonable. Uh, again, how many of these would you would you pick? Because one of the issues I find with Ar Arcanite Reaper is that I, I can't take as much damage as a lot of the units I'm wanting to re remove. You know, after five mana, right? Just a little bit later in games. So, do you take, do you take two? Do you take three if you have the opportunity? I solved that problem. You go to the face. <laughs> to the face. <laughs> okay. Trump. Or how many it's not do you a take? Number, though. At least how many do you take? Yeah, you didn't even answer the question, Trump. What? How many? It doesn't do you matter. So it's all to the face. You take like four of them. Fuck it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> four. Arcanite Reavers, okay. In terms of weapons, I think getting six total, like not six Arcanite Reapers, but like six general weapons mm -hmm. is probably on the high side. And once you get there, you tend to have cards that you no longer can play, even if you go to the face, because <laughs> that's like so many turns that you have to use up the durability on weapons. Uh, so... As far as Arcanite Reaper goes, I would pick two, and then I'd be really, really hard-pressed to pick a third one. And if I had five weapons already, like say I had miraculously three Fiery War Axes and two Arathi Weaponsmiths, then I would almost never pick Arcanite Reaper. Oh, okay. Good point. All right, next up is Brawl. This is a always a fun card, and actually, when I think when Eric was on here, oh, was it Eric? It was either Eric or Ben. It's like one of their favorite cards. I think it's Brawl. What do you what do you think of, of this card? It's a really fun card, and the animation is really great. Uh, as far as Arena goes, it's difficult to make this work because you tend to not have the, the 
control low minion type deck, which will make Brawl great. Uh, ends up... Uh-oh. It's mic below average. Oh, no, I just was speechless for a moment. Oh, okay. I think your mic's muted, bro. <laughs> I thought he was lifting something. Great, what do you think, Brawl? Uh, I mean, you feel really shit when the RNG doesn't go your way, but... Yeah, I don't know. Mixed feelings. It's really hard to get into a position to play it. Yeah. It, it's, it, it can be really good. Um, most people don't play around it, and that's really a strength. Uh, but even still, you have to get pretty lucky sometimes. I don't like it too much, but I just pick it sometimes because it's a card I don't try that often. Okay. Uh, Gore Hal. The big, big ol' weapon at the end. What do you think of this? It's pretty good. Seven damage to the face. Um, <laughs> also, you can kill a few creatures before you hit them in the face with it. I Have you ever used all seven durability on creatures? No. Okay. Never. Trump? I've done that. It's amazing. It's a seven for one. This card <laughs> is the ultimate value. <laughs> I've done it a few times too, actually. Just kill just little units the whole time. It's pretty, pretty great. A lot of people use it though to finish, like like you said, Crip, uh, in a combo or something. Okay, I think we have one more card left. It's the the big legendary here. Oops, big legendary here, Gromish. What you guys think? Uh, card is really good, even standalone. Um, I don't know if I would pick Inner Rage slightly higher just because I had Gromish, but maybe I would. It's a lot of damage if you have Inner Rage, but mm -hmm. even if you don't, it's a good card. I think the last time I played this card was like three months ago. So. Is that the last time you got it, or is that the last time you actually picked it? I think I picked it sometime after that, but didn't actually play it. I don't know. It's just okay. so rare. Yeah, yeah. Seems all okay. Right. Well, that guys, that's uh, that's really all the cards for Warriors. But why don't we talk a little bit about the decks, or maybe just what little that we, uh, you know, maybe what we know about the constructed OTK kind of decks. Uh, Trump, have you played played them at all? I know our group yeah. In fact, about I'm it. going to be playing the uh, Warrior one turn kill deck as my Warrior deck of choice. It's uh, it's a lot <laughs> you don't of fun. Talk too much, yeah. No, I mean, I'm free to talk about it. I even have, yeah. the, well, the deck list I'm going to run. But, uh... There's lots of variations of the combo. There are. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Actually, Crypt, do you have much experience with the OTK deck? Uh, I lost against it a few times. It seems pretty good. I think if I played it more, I'd probably up my chance of winning against it. Mm -hmm. It seems to be very, like, situational-based. And once you figure out how to dodge situations... You'll do a lot better. Seems okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's one of those decks that's pretty hard to uh, put in a spot where you know how it'll do against certain decks. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of put them in three buckets, the the combos themselves. One is the Alex Straws a Charge, which I think a lot of you guys on Reddit probably saw from Artosis, I think, posting his list at some point. And then there's the old school Molten Giant with Brewmaster and you know that whole craziness with the Warsong Commander. And then lately I've seen a little bit more of the whole Wargans. Uh, just inter -rage with Wargan and mixing that with either Charge or, or Warsong Commander. So any of those combos do a shitload of damage. Uh, but Trump, any of those that you, you think are stronger than, than the others? Oops. Well, I think almost all of them will always rely on some part of Warsong Commander and Molten Giants. Mm -hmm. And there's just one big weakness to it, which is why ultimately, like this deck was out a while ago. Yeah. Um, it's sort of come back in to flavor because Ice Block has been not nerfed, but the Mage Freeze spells were nerfed, which is where Ice Block was really good. Mm -hmm. And then one turn kill Warrior couldn't get around that. But now it's gone, so it's slightly better. But you can still play around it by leaving your opponent at 15 plus life. And yes, people say that, oh, the warrior can use a weapon to reduce his own life total. But you can also play around that and like leave your opponent at 20 and then finish them off in one shot, something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reasonable deck. 
Yeah, I say it's, like you said, it's it's kind of resurfaced again, and partially because I think a lot of the removal uh, meta has been, you know, it's, it's a lot better now than it used to be. You know, like three months ago or something like that. A lot of people using Wild Pyro with a lot of these spells too now to help just like, against aggro decks and such. But yeah, uh, I know one of the questions in the Reddit thread are whether this OTK deck. Do you do you think this OTK deck is going to be nerfed, kind of like the Hunter deck, because it, it has a little bit of the feel to it. The setup is a lot different, in my opinion, but it does have the end result, which is the same, which you can't really prepare for something that has charge right off the bat, uh, or you can't react to it in, in Hearthstone. Thoughts on that, uh, Crip? I don't know. Seems pretty fun to play a warrior. I mean, the game goes on, and it still feels a bit dynamic. Uh, I haven't played that much against them. I played maybe like four games. I won like half of them. It feels like it's back and forth. I don't, I don't really mind that too much. I guess the hunter, it was nothing. They would play nothing, and then you would die. Yeah. I think that was a little <laughs> bit more than what we're seeing on a warrior, and it would it would shock me if you know they nerf hunters and now they nerf warriors. Because I mean, what else what else can you really do? <laughs> Trump, your thoughts? I don't think it needs to be nerfed. Uh, it's not too anti-fun because unlike the Hunter deck, it's very interactive and you play a little game of how far do I reduce this guy's hit points before <laughs> yeah. I stop attacking him and that's pretty interesting and strategic and I don't think the deck is overpoweringly overpoweringly strong, although the one turn Hunter kill deck also wasn't, but it was, I argue, less fun than this one I think it's fine Okay, great. Uh, well, why don't we take a quick break and get, get some of these questions set up. You guys can post your questions in the Reddit thread, as always, and we'll try to read out um, maybe four or five of them, and then we'll call it a day. So take a, you know, go ahead and post there. Actually, did it just post? Uh, stream chat's kind of acting funny for me. Well, it's anyways, it's the Reddit thread. Go ahead and check out the, uh, oh, actually, my, my own my own threads, or my own links are being deleted in my stream thread chat. Man, this is crazy. But go ahead and uh, go to the, go to the subreddit reddit.com slash r slash hearthstone. You'll see you'll see the the value town thread there and post your questions there. We'll ask them. But we'll be right back, guys. See you in a second. <laughs> 